you can learn a lot about life through baseball. Yeah. You know, okay. when life throws you curveballs, you knock them out of the park. I like Sometimes it. you step up to the plate, uh-huh. you swing, and you miss, but that's okay. Yeah, or sometimes you you're the pitcher, and sometimes you're the catcher. Uh-uh. Either way, you're going to no. have a good time. That's, what? That's Those are some that's famous that's sayings that's from baseball, and I bring them up because uh-huh. the guy on the phone for a second date today, his name is Matthew, and he met the girl that he wants to call at a co-ed softball game. Oh, What's that- up, Matthew? How are you? <laughs> Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How about you guys? Pretty good. Were you the oh pitcher or the catcher that day? Oh, <laughs> I mainly bat and, uh, you know, play third base, but... Uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank God so, for yeah. answering it like God, that. God, you're a sick man. <laughs> your email said that you met the girl that you want to call. Her name is Trisha? Yeah, yeah. She's real sweet. Okay. And it says here you met her at a co-ed softball game. How'd that work? Yeah, she was on the uh, opposite team. Oh, the so. enemy. Yeah, well, yeah, so that's, you know, a little extra charm as well. Uh, Let me guess. She was pitching to you, she struck you out, and then you threatened to fight her. No like, way, dude. That's, that's what... usually how softball, friendly softball games go, Jubal. Yeah. You're right. right. Yeah. A lot that of physical it, violence. Is that how it went down? I, I, no, I, it was more like when we all went to the bar. Oh. Then you threatened to fight her. No. <laughs> There was no fighting. No Thank fighting. You. Just softball. Okay. Just softball. Strange. No fighting during the game or afterwards. It's different than any co ed sports league that I've been involved in. There's always a fight at some point, but okay. Can we move on from nice. violence, please. All right. So, so you met her at the bar? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and had you had your eye on her like all game? Oh, yes. All game for sure. Nice. What, was, what about her stuck out to you? Oh, I mean, her her legs just go on for days, you know? One of those girls with legs all the way up to her butt. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> hot. <laughs> so hot. Yeah, we all have she was She was really good at the game, and on top of it all, she seemed like a genuinely cool chick. Awesome. So okay. how did you approach her at the bar? Oh, I mean, I grabbed her a drink and, you know, said congrats for whooping her ass, and, you know, <laughs> then we just started talking about how long we had been playing and then one thing led to another and i ended up getting her number and we set a date to go hiking sweet how was the hike oh it was great she met me where we were going to start out nice Uh, what'd you say Oh, I just said nice. Sorry. I, I mean, I heard you. I was just like, what? It's very nice. She met you there. Yeah. Awesome. For you. <laughs> she met you where you were going to start. That's better than well. meeting you at the end of the trail, I guess. I approve. Uh, <laughs> and she was just as awesome as the first time you met her. Absolutely. Like, she did great on the hike, and we were able to talk. We weren't winded or anything. And, uh, I mean, at the end, like when we said goodbye, like I didn't know if, you know, a kiss was feeling out, but, and I mean, she was real sweaty. I was real sweaty. Yeah. I didn't know, like, we kind of just had a quick hug, but like, it was still like, you felt that connection there and we made plans for about a week later to go out again. Oh, so okay. you guys had a second date. No, see, like a day before she texted to cancel, she needed to cancel for some reason, oh. but... So I don't know, and now it's like, now I haven't really heard from her, so I kind of feel blown off. Have you tried to reschedule that date that you had planned? I mean, yeah, I sent one or two texts just saying, hey, sorry, you know, scheduling didn't work. Is next weekend good? You know, and I, I didn't really get an answer from any of that. Can I ask, I mean, just looking back at the time you guys spent together between like the softball game and the hiking, do you think that she also thought of this as a romantic date? Well, I mean, maybe... I would hope it would be kind of obvious because I asked for her number. I said I would love to get together. Like, to me, that that sends a pretty clear signal of, like, hey, I'm interested in you. Right. You know, even if, like, things go slow or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. So how long has it been since you've heard from her? It's been over a week since I talked with her, and she hasn't responded to the two texts I sent. Oh, man. Just a sweaty hug at the end of the hike. That's all you got. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll play a song, come back, and then find out if you got a second date or if you get ditched. Mm-hmm. Thanks, man. All right, hang on. I got to say I'm skeptical of you, Matthew. Am I suspect? Yes, you are. 
For what? Well, we do a lot of these second dates, all right? And everything always sounds normal until we get the person on the phone. Oh, and yeah. then something weird comes out, okay? Now, you said that you met this girl at a co-ed softball game. You went yeah. to the bar after, asked for a number, and you guys went on a hike and had a great time and nothing weird happened. That is all true. Okay. <laughs> Well, if I call her and I find out that you've been going to all of her games since then, dressed up like... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Buddy, I will be, I will be 100% honest okay. with you. That thought did cross my mind. <laughs> okay. But I denied it because I didn't want to be a creeper. All I right, good. I, I picture you in the stands like an NFL quarterback's mom with her name on your shirt, sitting there like... <laughs> Go, Trisha! That's my girl! So, oh, my God. You, you promised me you haven't done that. I, I have not done that. All right. He still doesn't trust you, no, just I so still, you know. I still am a little weary of you. I'm going to dial the phone number right now, though, and get her on the phone and find out why she's not calling you back, okay? All right. <laughs> Hello? Hi, is Trisha there? Yes, this is she. Hey, Trisha. How are you? My name is Jubal, and I host a radio show called Brook and Jubal in the Morning. Okay. <laughs> I'm calling because one of our listeners sent an email about you. His name is Matthew, and he sent us an email saying you guys were supposed to go out on a date, and then you stopped responding to him, and he wants to know why. He sent an email about that? Why would he do that? Because <laughs> he liked you, and he would like to go out again, but... You just stopped talking to him, so he thought maybe we could help him out and figure out the answer. Look, I am not comfortable discussing this. If it's something way too personal, you don't have to tell us. But if it's not, I mean, he wants to know. He liked you a lot. <sighs> you got to put yourself in his shoes. You know how frustrating it can be if you feel like you connected with somebody and then they drop off. I mean, yeah, I get that. And he's a good guy. I totally got that sense from him. Okay, so if he's a good guy, then why aren't you calling him back? Look, he was really cool. He's just not marriage material. Whoa. Why is he not marriage material? Did you guys get into that conversation on your first date? <laughs> no, no, we didn't, like, talk about it. But, like, you could just tell from the date. Is he immature or something? I mean... Well, like, here's where I am. I am not getting any younger, and I absolutely want to get married someday. Yeah. And he's just... Not going to be that guy. That is a really quick judgment to make after meeting someone just one time. Yeah. Actually, we hung out twice. Oh. Okay, so two okay, times is enough right. for you to know that? <laughs> now you know everything yeah. about him. How can you possibly know that he's not marriage material after two hangouts? Because after the second time we hung out, he took me back to his car, mm -hmm. and his car was full of stuff. Like, Piles and piles. Wait, and are you saying that it was just messy? Like there was like garbage and stuff in it? Well, like I didn't know. So I had asked him, I was like, what's the deal with all your stuff? Are you moving or something? <laughs> and he said no. And he said that he lives out of his van. He what? lives in his van? <laughs> yeah. And he does it by choice. What do you mean? I Like, it's not that he's homeless. It's that he wants to be homeless. Yeah. He chooses this. Really? What? what did he say to you to make you think that? He said, look, it's this really great situation. I choose this. I feel it's better. I'm saving money. And I look in there, and there is a mattress. There's a jug of water, hot plate. It's really weird. Yeah. Normally, when you see a van with a mattress in it on a first date, that's a good sign. No. <laughs> so you're saying you didn't want to see him again because he lives in his van. No, I don't know. I've been going back and forth over this like for the past few days because like he lives in a van yeah. so you're saying you don't want to move into a van if you guys ever got more serious no well, no i don't know that's the thing you don't know if you want to move into a van you might be willing to move into a van no i definitely don't want to live in a van like that's the problem okay. but don't, i mean don't you think Okay, granted, this is a kind of an odd situation, but he has like a regular job, right? He has a really good job, and he makes like a ton of money. Whoa. He just chooses to save it. I All right, it. so he just, the guy just likes to live in a van. He seems really in love with his living situation, and if that's the case, I don't want to mess with it. I have so many questions. You don't about want to make the guy give up his house, you know? 
exactly. His green van. Yeah. Well, Trisha, I do need to let you know that Matthew is actually on the other line listening, maybe in his van right now, and he wants to talk to you. What? Yeah. Matthew, you there? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Trisha. <laughs> oh, my God. I am not in my van, just to clarify. I'm, uh, I'm in my office. I'm at work right now. <laughs> well, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just really surprised because, like, when we went out, I mean, you, you seemed to think it was really kind of cool what I was doing. Yeah, I said it was cool when I was looking at it because I didn't just want to tell you it was weird right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, um, now you're just 180 on this, so I, I, I'm, just, I'm confused. Matthew, think about it. I mean, how could a girl see a van and think, I want to stay the night with him. I'm not sure where I'm going to go to the bathroom if I have to go, but... Just owning a van and living out of it is awesome. I have this freedom that everybody else is dreaming about. I save all this money. It keeps going in the bank when everybody else is spending and going into debt on these houses that they can't afford and they're never in because they're always at work all day for them. I mean, what's the point of it? The point is to actually have a place where you could hang out not something that you could, like, drive from point A to point B, like you're home traveling everywhere. But that means I can hang out everywhere, Trisha. <laughs> no, I can hang out. Like, the world is my home. <laughs> and, Trish, I'm not living in the Stone Age with this. Like, I've got Wi-Fi, you know, I, oh. I can run things off this generator. Like, I have electricity. <laughs> I have the basic things that I need. And stay connected with the world. I can work remotely if I want to. Like, come on. He's got it all figured out, Trisha. It just sounds weird to me. I never pictured my boyfriend living in a van. Uh, <laughs> on purpose. But it may be fun, Trisha. I mean, it's definitely an adventure. Yeah, that, that's a word for it. <laughs> it is an adventure. That's what I've been trying to tell you. I don't know, man. I mean, you have a great personality and you're a really cool guy but the whole living in a van thing is just a giant turn off for me just give it a weekend trisha like <laughs> pretend you're going on a luxurious camping trip <laughs> give it two nights and i will convince you i promise two nights that is a big ask sir so you want me to spend two nights in your van when we've only been on one official date together <laughs> You are the one who is throwing around the marriage word of, you know, needing to find marriage material. So, like, two nights is not going to kill you. He has a point. I mean, I say two nights is a drop in the bucket. <laughs> yeah. In that case, Trisha, would you like to go out with Matthew on a second date? We will pay for it. I mean, I guess the date would be two nights in his van, but whatever. Would you like to go out with him again? I, you know, I'm still... Kind of on the fence about it. I am going to say no to two nights in the van. Oh. <laughs> but I'm up to hanging out with him again. Okay, so you'll oh. go out on a date with him, but you won't sleep in the van. Yes, I will go out on a date. I will not spend the two nights in a van. Okay. <laughs> well, advice. congratulations, yeah. Matthew. That's a successful second date. I can work with that. All right. <laughs> so you guys go out on your date, Matthew. You try to convince her that living in a van is better than living in a house. And I wish you both luck. Yeah. Trisha, freedom is in our future. I guarantee <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs>